Then Jehu assembled all the people and said to them, Ahab served Baal a little, but Jehu will serve him much. Now therefore, call to me all the prophets of Baal, all his worshippers, and all his priests. Let none be missing, for I have a great sacrifice to offer to Baal. Whoever is missing shall not live. But Jehu did it with cunning, in order to destroy the worshippers of Baal. And Jehu ordered, Sanctify a solemn assembly for Baal. So they proclaimed it, and Jehu sent throughout all Israel. And all the worshippers of Baal came, so that there was not a man left who did not come. And they entered the house of Baal, and the house of Baal was filled from one end to the other. He said to him who was in charge of the wardrobe, Bring out the vestments for all the worshippers of Baal. So he brought out the vestments for them. Then Jehu went into the house of Baal with Jehonadab, the son of Rechab. And he said to the worshippers of Baal, Search and see that there is no servant of the Lord here among you, but only the worshippers of Baal. Then he went in to offer sacrifices and burnt offerings. Now Jehu had stationed eighty men outside and said, The man who allows any of those whom I give into your hands to escape shall forfeit his life. So as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, Jehu said to the guard and to the officers, Go in and slay them. Let not a man escape. So when they put them to the sword, the guard and the officers cast them out and went into the inner room of the house of Baal. And they brought out the pillar that was in the house of Baal and burned it. And they demolished the pillar of Baal and demolished the house of Baal and made it a latrine to this day. Thus Jehu wiped out Baal from Israel. But Jehu did not turn aside from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which he made Israel to sin, the golden calves that were in Bethel and in Dan. And the Lord said to Jehu, Because you have done well in carrying out what is right in my eyes, and have done to the house of Ahab according to all that was in my heart, your, your sons of the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel. But Jehu was not careful to walk in the law of the Lord, the God of Israel, with all his heart. He did not turn from the sins of Jeroboam, which he made Israel to sin. In those days, the Lord began to cut off parts of Israel. Hazael defeated them throughout the territory of Israel. From the Jordan eastward, all the land of Gilead, the Gadites, and the Reubenites, and the Manassites, from Eroer, which is by the valley of the Arnon, that is, Gilead and Bashan. Now the rest of the acts of Jehu, and all that he did, and all his might, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Jehu slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria. And Jehoaz his son reigned in his stead. The time that Jehu reigned over Israel in Samaria was twenty-eight years. Now when Athaliah the mother of Ahaziah saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the royal family. But Jehoshaphat, the daughter of King Joram, sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from among the king's sons who were about to be slain. And she put him and his nurse in a bedchamber. Thus she hid him from Athaliah, so that he was not slain. And he remained with her six years, hid in the house of the Lord, while Athaliah reigned over the land. But in the seventh year, Jehoiada sent and brought the captains of the Karaites and of the guards, and had them come to him in the house of the Lord. And he made a covenant with them, and put them under oath in the house of the Lord. And he showed them the king's son. And he commanded them, This is the thing that you shall do. One third of you, those who come off duty on the Sabbath, and guard the king's house, another third being at the gate, sir, and a third at the gate behind the guards, shall guard the palace. And the two divisions of you which come on duty and force on the Sabbath, and guard the house of the Lord, shall surround the king, each with his weapons in his hand, and whoever approaches the ranks is to be slain. Be with the king when he goes out and when he comes in. The captains did according to all that Jehoiada the priest commanded, and each brought his men who were to go off duty on the Sabbath, with those who were to come on duty on the Sabbath, and came to Jehoiada the priest. And the priest delivered to the captains the spears and shields that had been King David's, which were in the house of the Lord. And the guards stood, every man with his weapons in his hand, from the south side of the house to the north side of the house, around the altar and the house. Then he brought out the king's son and put the crown upon him and gave him the covenant. 
and they proclaimed him king and anointed him. And they clapped their hands and said, Long live the king. When Athaliah heard the noise of the guard and of the people, she went into the house of the Lord to the people. And when she looked, there was the king standing by the pillar, according to the custom, and the captains and the trumpeters beside the king and all the people of the land rejoicing and blowing trumpets. And Athaliah tore her clothes and cried, Treason! Treason! Then Jehoiada the priest commanded the captains, who were set over the army, Bring her out between the ranks, and slay with the sword anyone who follows her. For the priest said, Let her not be slain in the house of the Lord. So they laid hands on her, and she went through the horse's entrance to the king's house, and there she was slain. And Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord and the king and the people, that they should be the Lord's people, and also between the king and the people. Then all the people of the land went to the house of Baal and tore it down. His altars and his images they broke in pieces, and they slew Matan the priest of Baal before the altars. And the priest posted watchmen over the house of the Lord. And he took the captains, the Kerites, the guards, and all the people of the land, and they brought the king down from the house of the Lord, marching through the gate of the guards to the king's house. And he took his seat on the throne of the kings, so all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was quiet after Athaliah had been slain with the sword at the king's house. Jehoash was seven years old when he began to reign. In the seventh year of Jehu, Jehoash began to reign, and he reigned forty years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zebiah of Beersheba, and Jehoash did what was right in the eyes of the Lord all his days, because Jehoiada the priest instructed him. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away. The people continued to sacrifice and burn incense on the high places. Jehoash said to the priests, All the money of the holy things, which is brought into the house of the Lord, the money for which each man is assessed, the money from the assessment of persons, and the money which a man's heart prompts him to bring into the house of the Lord, let the priests take, each from his acquaintance, and let them repair the house wherever any need of repairs is discovered. But by the twenty-third year of King Jehoash, the priests had made no repairs on the house. Therefore, King Jehoash summoned Jehoiada the priest and the other priests and said to them, Why are you not repairing the house? Now therefore take no more money from your acquaintances, but hand it over for the repair of the house. So the priests agreed that they should take no more money from the people and that they should not repair the house. Then Jehoiada the priest took a chest and bored a hole in the lid of it, and set it beside the altar on the right side as one entered the house of the Lord. And the priests who guarded the threshold put in it all the money that was brought into the house of the Lord. And whenever they saw that there was much money in the chest, the king's secretary and the high priest came up, and they counted and tied up in bags the money that was found in the house of the Lord. Then they would give the money that was weighed out into the hands of the workmen, who had the oversight of the house of the Lord, and they paid it out to the carpenters, and the builders who worked upon the house of the Lord, and to the masons and the stone cutters, as well as to buy timber and quarried stone for making repairs on the house of the Lord, and for any outlay upon the repairs of the house. But there were not made for the house of the Lord basins of silver, snuffers, bowls, trumpets, or any vessels of gold or of silver from the money that was brought into the house of the Lord, for that was given to the workmen who were repairing the house of the Lord with it. And they did not ask an accounting from the men into whose hand they delivered the money to pay out to the workmen, for they dealt honestly. The money from the guilt offerings and the money from the sin offerings was not brought into the house of the Lord. It belonged to the priests. At that time, Hazael, king of Syria, went up and fought against Gath and took it. But when Hazael set his face to go up against Jerusalem, Jehoash, king of Judah, took all the votive gifts that Jehoshaphat and Jehoram and Ahaziah his fathers, the kings of Judah, had dedicated, and his own votive gifts, and all the gold that was found in the treasuries of the house of the Lord, and of the king's house, and sent these to Hazael king of Syria. Then Hazael went away from Jerusalem. Now the rest of the acts of Joash, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? His servants arose and made a conspiracy, and slew Joash in the house of Milo, on the way that goes down to Selah. It was Josachar, the son of Shimeath, 
and Jehoshabad, the son of Shomer, his servants, who struck him down so that he died. And they buried him with his fathers in the city of David, and Amaziah his son reigned in his stead. A Song of Ascents Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, he who made heaven and earth. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake I consecrate myself, that they also may be consecrated in truth. I do not pray for these only, but also for those who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory which you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and you in me that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am, to behold my glory, which you have given me in your love for me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these know that you have sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. Many of us are tempted to embrace bus stop Christianity, where we simply wait around until Jesus comes to pick us up so we can finally get to heaven and rest. If that idea were right, we would almost expect Jesus to take us out of the world as soon as we come to faith. Yet he does not. In fact, he says to the Father, I do not pray that you should take them up out of the world. We are supposed to be here. Beyond that, he sees us as participating in his mission. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. We are not just waiting around for death or the apocalypse. Rather, our role as Christians is to participate in the mission of Christ to the world by spreading the gospel and living lives conformed to his. We are meant to dwell in unity with one another, and even to stand by night in the house of the Lord, seeking him in prayer. We are not of the world, but we are most definitely in the world, called to bring Christ with us wherever we go. How can you participate in Christ's mission to the world?